Hey everyone, Stefan here from Be a Python Dev. Uh, today I don't have too much to talk about. So to you know continue improving our development skills, I'm just gonna jump into some leak code, work through a couple problems, uh, share the walkthrough with you guys, talk about it, hopefully have some fun. All right, let's get in there. All right, here we are, category all, um, sorted by acceptance rate and difficulty. Uh, swap salary, this one looks pretty cool. Let's check this one out. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, SQL schema, given a table salary such as the one MySQL, this is not Python. What is, what is this SQL stuff? I've, I've never heard of this. Yeah, we're gonna skip this one. <laughs> all right, uh, flipping an image. Acceptance, 76.7, difficulty easy. Uh, hasn't been seen in many company interviews. Given a binary matrix A, we want to flip the image horizontally, then invert it and return the resulting image. To flip an image horizontally means that each row of the image is reversed. For example, flipping blah 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 results in blah blah blah. And to invert the image means changing all the zeros to the ones and the ones to the zeros. Is this problem is literally just like flipping a 2D matrix around. Hopefully this should actually be pretty easy. All right, so if we're input a bunch of hooplas <laughs> and uh, we all put some of these guys, I think there's easy ways to reverse a uh, list. I don't think that's what it wants us to actually do though. All right, this problem is incredibly hard. I had to uh, scour my brain on how to uh, reverse a list. After hours of pondering, it came to me. So let's uh, just quickly go through this and see if we can flip this list now that we have the awesome knowledge to reverse list. Um, so this is a 2D list of list of ints. I'm always not the most familiar with typings. So for, for enter list, A. Um, what do we want to do? Actually, I don't think we want to use for logic. Man, it's been a long time since I've done one of these coding problems. Uh, I think we want to actually want to do for i in range a. Uh, then we reverse this a i equals a dot reverse. I think this works. Uh, and then for j in range ai, this should be another list. Um, if ai j equals zero, ai j equals one. Else A I J and this should actually be a comparator and then this equals zero. I think that would do it right. So we're just assigning everything in place and then we uh, return A. Let's just run this code. List object cannot be interpreted as an integer. Or I in range A. What? Oh, <laughs> I'm a dummy. Uh, this is length. I don't know why I was thinking this. Dir. And it should actually be uh, length minus one. Int object is not iterable. Ah. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> I knew what I was trying to think. Again, it's been a while since I've done this and I haven't done any coding, so we're just warming up. There we go. This might be an, an iterable. And obviously, none type has no length. AI has no length. What, what are you telling me? All right, after another few minutes of scouring the internet, apparently we found out that a.reverse doesn't actually return anything, so, uh, Apparently that wasn't what we want to do. Uh, it just reverses it inline. So we don't need to reassign it and that's what was screwing us over. So let's try this again. Uh, also we were reversing the wrong thing. 
Uh, we we want to reverse the index. So AI that reversed this way. Uh, this should this should run, and it should return the wrong output apparently. How did it flip some of these things, but it didn't flip other of the things? That's really weird. All right, apparently we goofed again. I don't think we actually need to do um, length minus one because we are putting this in the range function. So this wasn't going through all of the uh, variables or all the values, which I think that actually makes sense why it, yeah, because it changed the these two here that we care about. It didn't change the last one. Obviously, what we can learn from this is coding is hard. All right, now that we've done these reverses and all this other fun stuff and our answer is accepted, I'm just going to submit this and ruin the thing because I'm not really thinking through too much about edge cases. But it seems simple enough. Why not? Hey, I didn't run into any edge cases. And the memory usage is less than 100% of Python online. Uh, that's interesting. How's the memory usage so good here? <laughs> Uh, I actually, I want to look at this and see what other people are doing to make their memory usage not as awesome as what we did. Wait, is it? It's less than 100%. So where's where's my box? Sorry, we do not have enough accepted submissions to show distribution chart. Interested. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Apparently on this problem, they don't have enough accepted solutions to show the memory distribution, but yet it says mine is better than 100%. Um, that seems a little fishy, right? Seems a little fishy? Yeah, whatever. All right, well, we finished this one uh, after embarrassing ourselves with taking the wrong lengths and using the range function incorrectly and using reverse is completely wrong. Uh, it's obviously, like, you probably shouldn't even watch me. Apparently, I am a horrible coder by not recognizing all these things. Uh, anyways, let's go on to another one. All right, we got another one here called Article Views 1, and it's unlocked. So this is a private question you got to be a member for. It's, I think it's like $10 a year. If it's not $10 a year, then I'm overpaying. SQL again. Foiled. Yeah, no. Does it say SQL when I'm looking at this? No. Is there a way to just like get rid of the SQL problems? Yeah, whatever. Um, design a stack with increment operation. Uh, this looks to be somewhat frequently done. Let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, all right, so we've got a custom stack. We got some init, push, pop, increment. Uh, your custom stack, do, do, do. Design a stack which supports the following operations. Implement the custom stack class. Uh, it takes a max size. There's a push. Um, initialize the object with max size, which is the maximum number of elements in the stack, or do nothing if the stack reach the max size. Add x to the top of the stack. Um, increments the bottom k elements of the stack by val. If there are less than k elements in the stack, just increment all the elements in the stack. All right, after reading through these, we just need to implement these functions, apparently. Um, it shouldn't be too bad. Let's just store max size. Uh, we'll set that into a class variable. Uh, instance, the class instance variable. I don't think there's much else we need to do with this. I guess uh, we need a container to store the data. We'll use a Python list for this since the Python list has some built in stacky type functions related to it, uh, such as self.data.append. And we'll put x on there. And then we can just do a return self.data.pop. And then for the increments, this seems relatively not too bad. Uh, there's probably some gotchas that I'm not thinking about. Increments the bottom k elements of the stack by val. If there are less than k elements in the stack, just increment all the elements in the stack. There are less than k elements in the stack. Just increment all the elements. Um, right, so. <clears throat> for i in k 
range k. Uh, if i is less than length, right? Does this need to be a minus one? I always hate these off by one problems. Uh, then we'll just increment self dot data. Uh, I and we we'll use plus equals val to increment it. I think this should potentially just work, right? Wrong answer. That's not what you like to see. Uh, let's debug this a little bit and figure out what I'm doing wrong. All right, so I think where we messed up on this one is we're not actually using the max size anywhere. Uh, so let's add that check here in the push if length of self.data equals self.max size. Uh, it does not equal. <clears throat> then we append it. Otherwise, we're going to not append it. This should take care of our error, I hope. Uh, no, we can't pop from an empty list, obviously. Uh, so, pops and returns the top or stack or negative one at the stack is empty. All right, so what we want to do here is check this, obviously. So if length of self tied data equals zero, return negative one. Uh, we don't actually need to write else here because it's not going to do anything. All right, so we're still getting something wrong. I'm not sure why here. It looks like the increment did not add the correct value to this one. And we're doing two increments. Um, this seems mostly right. Let's take a second to look at this. All right, so apparently that concern I called out earlier was correct. Uh, since we're doing if i is less than, we don't actually need this uh, minus one check in here. So we can go ahead and remove the minus one and just do if i is less than the length, then go ahead and do the increments. Because apparently what we were doing is we were doing the five increments for a length of five, and we weren't actually incrementing the very last value. So when we tried to pop the last value, it was the same size as before. This should be good now. All right, so accepted, runtime 20 milliseconds. I don't think there's any other gotchas I need to really think through too hard. Uh, maybe if we try to, well, if we try to pop on an empty list, then it's just gonna return negative one anyways. And we're not gonna increment on an empty list either. So I don't think there's any checks we need to do here either. All right, so that'll do it for this week's uh, leak code code off jam whatever we want to call it I, they haven't come up with a name for this series yet but you know anyways just hopefully once or twice a week i'll run through a few problems on leak code and we'll work through them together talk about them all that other fun stuff so again in that first problem we flipped that image around switched them zeros to ones that was real fun and then in that second problem we went ahead and finished implementing that list uh, the increment function was pretty cool i've never thought to add something like that to a list but again that's what you get with custom logic and compared to using built-in stuff. So if your application needs something like that on a list that you're using to store data, uh, go ahead and wrap a class around it and you can do something fun like that. Uh, if you learned anything, definitely like and subscribe and see you next time. Peace.